All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Had just a couple of uh, technical hiccups. One of them being it doesn't seem like my uh, my monitor is picking up the music for some reason. So I hope that that is actually working. Um, if it's not, let me know. And we'll have to look at that. But anyway, so uh, there's that. And then uh, I was also having uh, some other issues with uh, actually getting the YouTube uh, title of the video to change. Looks like their, uh, their API is actually failing on the back end, which is awesome. So good stuff there. Okay, you do hear the music. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, Diamond. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. All right, so uh, before we get into um, what we're going to talk about tonight, uh, I do want to just take a quick second and thank the supporters of the channel listed here on the screen starting with the partners who are the highest tier of subscription over on Patreon and YouTube memberships. They are Gerbolis uh, Inc. and Gabby Bashir. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the other supporters listed here. They are a combination of the other tiers of support on YouTube memberships, Patreon, as well as Twitch subscriptions. So thank you all very much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. That being said, uh, of course, I also appreciate uh, all of you either here on the Twitch side or the YouTube side. Uh, we do simulcast. Uh, so without you guys, uh, obviously, this project and the channel, etc., would not exist. So thank you all for being here. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Um, so last time we uh, had basically talked about, um, or pretty much finished up, rather, um, scene loading and unloading. Um, and uh, it looks like we have that working pretty well. So we wanted to switch gears a little bit tonight and talk about something that's going to set us up for some features that we're going to be putting in um, here shortly. Um, and one of those features is, uh, is obviously going to be animation. So animation has uh, the requirements, uh, uh, I should say a lot of requirements around time. Um, it's very um, it's very central to time and the way that it's controlled, so forth and so on. And so, you, as you can probably gather uh, by the title, um, at least on the Twitch side, um, you know, time is is uh, what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about multiple timelines tonight. So, up to this point, we've basically had one, uh, and at this point, we're going to be having uh, multiple uh, timelines, or at least two uh, to begin with. So what do I mean when I say multiple timelines? Well, multiple timelines are basically um, more or less, uh, there's going to be the timeline that we have now, which is what I'm going to call the engine timeline or the game time. Um, I guess maybe we, could, we should say application timeline, engine timeline. Um, I haven't really decided on a name for that. But that is uh, essentially the default timeline. So it's got no scaling applied. Um, it runs at normal speed, um, and it's never it never really changes. The other really important timeline that we're going to have is what we're going to call uh, game time. I guess we could call that game time, right? Um, and game time is uh, essentially the world time speed, more or less, right? So uh, you may have seen uh, examples of games that alter time, whether they can go, uh, they can slow down time, stop time, or even some, in some cases reverse time. Um, and uh, you know that gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of power, a lot of capability. Um, and so one thing that we're going to look into doing is creating that separate timeline of game timeline. Now, why do we need a separate timeline? Uh, the answer to that is because, uh, especially in the case of an editor, um, we may not want the scene to actually be updating and animating and doing all this other stuff. We may want to put the brakes on that at some point, but still be able to move the camera around, right? Which requires, uh, you know, movement calculations that require time. And so we can actually um, tie the our, our sort of editor camera to one timeline, right? Our, our sort of world or editor or application timeline. And then we can tie um, our in-scene animations um, and things like that to a separate timeline that we can then scale. So we can speed that up, we can slow it down, we can even stop it. Um, and uh, that gives us a lot of control uh, so that we can look at things and, and debug things um, as we're sort of uh, moving along, right? 
And ideally, uh, we would even be able to uh, step forward uh, a certain frame at a time, right? So we, we might have the ability to actually be able to step a single frame in time, um, which we'll probably have a definition of, uh, of you know, um, one, one sixtieth of a second, right? And so uh, that's going to be imperative to have that in place for all of the um, all of the various uh, features we're going to be implementing. So when we go to debug animation, we're going to want that, um, and so forth. So that is what we're going to look on um, look at tonight. Um, pause, yes, also exactly, yeah. So pause is is uh, obviously a, a a big component of that as well. Um, although one could argue that uh, pause might pause several timelines, right? So we are going to have this sort of global sort of time scale for the world, right? But within that, you can also have sub timelines. Um, so different animations may have different timelines that have different uh, rates of animation. Um, and uh, you might have audio clips that have different timelines, things like that. So we're going to think about some of that stuff too. But for right now, we're just going to focus on getting our second timeline in place uh, so that we can start thinking about how we um, want to implement some of those other timelines, right? All right, so I'm glad to hear the audio is working for you guys. That's good. Um, I can't hear anything through my my headphones at the moment, but I guess as, as long as you guys can hear it, that's the important part. So um, I may wind up actually taking these off. I don't know if the alert boxes work though or not, so we'll have to see. I don't know if that's gonna come through at all. Um, one thing I do need to change really quickly uh, is, let me see if my desktop sound works. No, yeah, I think my my monitoring through my headphones just in general is just not working for some reason tonight. Gotta love, gotta love AV stuff sometimes. All right. Um, Shylex, first time chat, welcome. Uh, first time I've caught you live, live in the UK, and probably will be the only time, fair enough. I love what you do and find it all very interesting to read about. I love the shorts too, so much wisdom. I appreciate that, thank you. Um, I actually need to get back to making the shorts. Um, I kind of fell behind on them this week and I haven't really had a lot of time to edit them and whatnot, so I, I probably need to to get back onto that, right? But uh, I'm glad you like them. Um, that uh, That helps me a lot. Uh, JPost2000, um, welcome. First time chatter, welcome to the stream. Uh, don't mean to detract from stream focus, but do you know anyone who could help with uh, increasing rep with Stack Overflow? Been asking around. Uh, the only thing I could say there is, um, I I'm assuming so that you can like post questions and post answers and stuff like that. Like the place to usually start is like going through and like looking for answers to edit. That will actually give you um because you can do that with no rep so um if that's what you're talking about edit some answers get some rep from that and then once you have enough then you'll be able to actually answer stuff and comment um if it's anything more in depth than that <laughs> i don't know how much i could help you there uh eddie over on the youtube side hello welcome uh chris w welcome uh, kind of random, but I was curious, how many more things do you have to do with the engine before you start your first game? So um, we can quickly look at uh, at this to-do list, actually. There's not that much um, that we need to do to officially start a game. There's a lot of these things we can actually skip, especially for the first game because it's going to be pretty simple, right? Um, so give me one second there's cats fighting i'll be right back sorry Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, one of my cats gets these evil tendencies to attack the other one sometimes. Have to go break it up. All right, um, so 
where was I? Um, so most of these features here that um, aren't checked off are things we have to um, we have to do these at some point. But so far, uh, all this stuff can actually be skipped. Um, we probably need. I'm thinking billboards and particles we might need. We could probably skip the rest of these input things. We do need to get, uh, actually we can skip this portion of I-18N, I think, uh, or internationalization for keyboard layouts. Um, we can skip that I-18N strings we probably need to do for um, translating the game to different languages. We don't really need this. We could probably get by without that. Could probably get by without that. Believe it or not, we actually can get by without physics. We can get by without networking. Um, we could probably get by without profiling, I think. Um, the timeline system is kind of what we're going to start building now. And that's going to be used for the skeletal animation system. So these are going to be needed um, for the first game that we're going to do. Technically, I could probably build a game without those two. Um, in theory, if I were to do it with maybe meshes that were placed together that uh, didn't have bones or anything, and then we could, you know, maybe build objects that way. Um, but if we're going to do all that, we might as well maybe at least look into this. Um, Sky Sphere and Water Plane, we probably could skip those. Um, none of this stuff in here under Terrain actually needs to be handled. Uh, volumes, we probably need to touch on volumes really quickly, if nothing else, for triggers. And maybe for visibility occlusion. Maybe. Um, we don't need this. So, I mean, it's like most of the stuff in here we actually don't really need for the first game because it's going to be a very simple arcade game. Um, so I am thinking it's probably realistically just timelines and animations, billboards, and maybe particles, right? We might be able to fake particles using billboards, maybe. Um, none of this stuff is really going to matter either. We already have audio, so that's the other big thing that we would have needed, right? So I think, I think that's really it, right? As far as like absolute features we have to have to make a, a very basic game. So we're going to talk about timelines tonight um, and start getting that into place and then move on from there. I hope that, um, I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. Particles will need instancing and or batching. So... And I could do triggers without volumes, you're right. Um, so we may have like a, a V1 of triggers and then once I do volumes, it'll it'll get uh, refactored. Um, so yeah, I think I think more or less that's probably what uh, what we need to actually get done. So it's it's actually not that that long of a list. There is a little bit of refactoring in the renderer I would like to do. There also is going to be probably some performance things we're going to have to address um, and some stability things we'll have to address. But in terms of new features, it's pretty limited. Okay. So, with all of that said, the first place that we want to look um, is actually in um, our engine which we actually haven't touched this in quite a while. Uh, and so uh, if we look here, uh, let's see, we don't want our creates. Let's go a little bit further than creates. If we look here in our run, like this is our main loop, right? And uh, we've already got some timing stuff in here. Um, and specifically we have a delta time that is always uh, calculated for us. Um, and uh, I think we're also storing the the total game time, if I remember correctly. Uh, let me see. Because technically we do have this, this sort of global engine state clock that keeps track of our time for us, and we step that every single frame. So um, that is more or less what we populate our frame data with. 
Um, let's see, we'll do the prepare. Where do we actually include that? I think it's before, before we do all this stuff. It's been a while since I've looked at this code, so I just have to re-familiarize myself with it really quickly. So we have our total time and our delta time here, right? So this is sort of what we're gonna call the, um, the engine, engine timeline, right? Um, and we might actually modify um, our p-frame data to to bear that in mind, maybe at least in comments, right? So if we look at um, our frame data, we have our delta time, which is the time in seconds since the last frame. Um, and then we have our total time since the application has been running. Um, and so uh, this is going to be, um, this is gonna be what we're gonna call um, the global engine timeline. Um, and then we'll say also never scaled, right? So we never wanna scale um, our global one ever. We always want a timeline of one on that because that's the one that we're gonna use for like moving our, our editor camera around and stuff. Um, and here we'll also say uh, the global engine timeline uh, never scaled, right? And so um, I guess I was gonna make a structure per timeline and I think I might actually, I might actually still do that and just move these to that. So. When we think about a, a timeline, um, we have a couple of properties. Um, let's do timeline. Uh, let's, I guess we can say timeline data. Right, and in that, um, we're gonna have basically these two properties. Right, um, and so actually we can get rid of uh, this bit that we added here, right? Um, and that, right? Um, the other thing that we want, one more additional property, which we don't have, which has always been one, um, in this case is gonna be F32 time is scale. And we're gonna keep the scale along with the timeline. Um, so we'll say brief, uh, the um, current scale of this timeline um, default, default um, is 1.0, uh, zero is paused. Uh, negative is rewind if supported by the system using this this timeline, right? So not everything is gonna support um, rewinding in this way. Uh, we'll probably make our animation system support that, but um, you know, the, uh, the game engine, for example, would not support that. Would it make sense to make a timeline a timeline a system? Wait, would it make sense to make timeline a system? Yes, that's exactly what we're gonna wind up doing. Um, and so we're just kind of thinking about um, this timeline data in the meantime, pardon the pun. Um, but what I'm thinking is we're probably going to wind up having a system that manages these various timelines. And actually what we could theoretically do is instead of actually parse, passing this stuff around in frame data, we could probably take it out of frame data and just have it globally queryable, which might be a much nicer way to, to handle this. In fact, I wasn't going to do that, but now that I think through it, I think that might be a nicer, a nicer way to work with this. It is going to be a breaking change, obviously, because we're going to have delta time all over the place that's going to be missing but I think that's okay. 
So let's actually do that. Um, so let's go to, let's go to, we'll put this in engine. I think, uh, yeah, this is gonna be under systems and we'll add a new one. Timeline system.h. And we'll slam that there, right? Um, and obviously we're gonna need our defines. I don't think we'll need much else though. That really should be it. Um, and then we will also need, we will also need timeline system dot C. And we're gonna include timeline system H and then we'll come back to this in a bit. All right, uh, so one thing I also do want to take a look at is, um, let's see, which one of these has a good example of, I think let's go with um, one of our more low level systems, like maybe Maybe the shader system is a good is a good candidate. So um, we're essentially going to mimic the way that this system is set up, right? And then we'll register it with our system manager uh, so that that can then um, stand this up for us. So more or less what we need is uh, this interface here, right? Uh, and so I'm going to go here and we'll paste this in here and we'll say it initializes the timeline system using the supplied configuration. Uh, that's fine. Um, we also need the call twice pattern. That's fine. Um, okay. The configuration, which needs to be a timeline system config which actually, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that should be it. And then shuts down the timeline system. Okay. So um, we'll have our initialize and our shutdown. Uh, we should probably come define what the configuration looks like, right? So timeline system config. And my immediate thought is we're going to need timeline configurations. Um, should we bother configuring it here or should we just have function calls? Because we could theoretically set this up via our application config. I don't know that we need to hook all that up right yet. I don't know that I want to hook that up actually until we figure out all of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna declare a U32 dummy. So we have something in there, right? And we're just gonna kind of ignore the configuration for right now. Um, so this needs to be timeline system initialize and timeline system shutdown and then uh, we're going to have a few different uh, functions, which all are going to be exported, right? We don't want to export the initialize and the shutdown, uh, but everything else we do. So uh, we want to do B8 timeline um, system uh, create and I suppose we could have a couple of ways of, of retrieving timelines, right? Um, my thought is we have like integer IDs that are returned when you actually create a, a timeline. So an, a unique ID is, is returned with that. 
Um, I suppose we could use our handle system for it too. Um, and then that would just basically uh, be a lookup into an array of timelines that we have in the system. Uh, let's go ahead and do that actually. So let's do uh, K handle. Um, and we're gonna say timeline system create. And I guess what we can do is set, we can provide a scale for now. Right, and we'll think of other properties uh, as we go. Uh, let's see. Lot missed out on a bunch of chat. It looks like okay. Um, few you, few guys use C. Uh, some do. Glad to watch you. Awesome. Well, welcome, David. Appreciate that. Please use a modern editor times change. Pros don't use Vim no more. That's not true at all. Not even remotely true. Um, and this isn't Vim, by the way. This is NeoVim. I actually switched to it because I'm more productive with it. Uh, modern IDEs are crap, in my opinion. Uh, they they have decent debuggers, but in terms of actually code, like code speed and editing speed, can't be matched. Um... Yeah, I know a lot of people that use Vim or NeoVim, for sure. Uh, efficiency and passion are different, yes, but I get both from Vim. So, yeah, for me, NeoVim is Vim. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've not used Emacs enough to give it a fair shot, to be honest, so I can't really comment on that. We have no, okay, so you're saying we have more RAM now and more add-ons. Well, just because we have more RAM doesn't mean that we need to abuse it, right? Like Visual Studio is the most bloated piece of software I've ever seen. It's huge, it's clunky, it's slow. You have to click through menus to find stuff. Like, no thanks. I much prefer something that's much smaller, much easier to use, um, quicker. Everything's accessible by keyboard. Emacs is an OS with an editor as an addition. Yeah, exactly. Uh, VS Code is not better in my opinion. I do use it as a as a debugger, right? Um, only because I need cross compatibility, uh, cross platform debugging. So it is a pretty decent debugger, but in terms of an editor, no thanks. I mean, I use NeoVim at work too, so can't really, yeah. It's not just passion. Yeah, soul foam. I'm I I'm beginning to agree. Um, I'm trying to use NeoVim or Emacs. I just can't reconstruct my mind after ten years of Visual Studio. So I used Visual Studio since version six, and I stopped using it three years ago. So yeah, I had you know just uh. I had quite a lot of uh, experience with Visual Studio and I was able to do it. It just, it's something you have to commit to for sure. Emacs is such a great OS. Too bad it's, uh, it has a bad editor. So is it bad though, or do you just need to configure it how you want it? That's the question. Uh, David, thank you for the uh, tier one sub. Appreciate that. Uh, every time I use Visual Studio, I want to beat it with a stick. Yeah, no kidding. It takes me more time to get it running right than with more basic tools. Agreed, yep. I appreciate that, David. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 a matter of preference, right? Um, I have have found through use that I'm much much faster with NeoVim than I ever was with Visual Studio, for sure. Uh, let's see. One more question from me about oh, my on, on about stack. Uh, is it okay to ask how something in a specific part of code works? with a compiler to gain a better understanding. If you're talking about unstack overflow, if it's not really related to the question, I would say probably not. But there's like Discord servers and stuff where you can have a better conversation for that, right? Like stack overflow is not really a, uh, it's not really a forum for conversation as it were. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, just because a lot of people use VS Code doesn't mean it's the only tool, right? I know a lot of people that use um, JetBrains. I know a lot of people that use Vim. I know a lot of people that use Emacs. And I'm actually, um, I actually personally am also working on my own editor on the side, which I haven't put up here yet because it's nowhere near ready. But yeah, it's it's all about, um, you know, what you prefer, what you're fastest with, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if there's, you know, server uh, debugging or uh, not debugging, if there's server file editing that you have to do through SSH or something, it can't be beat. Uh, Eyeless42, first time chat, welcome by the way. Uh, you use Yellowpad. I can't say I'm familiar with that one actually. You switched to NeoVim about a year ago and I'm way, and you're way faster than you were before. Yeah, that's my experience as well. And I'm only getting faster with it. I occasionally hit the wrong key, but other than that, I'm definitely, definitely getting faster with it. Okay. Um, I should probably write some code. <laughs> All right, so timeline system create. Um, so we want to create a timeline. We want to be able to, I guess, destroy um, a timeline. So we'll say uh, void timeline system destroy. And we'll toss in a K handle. Um, and we'll say timeline. Right, so we'll take a handle to the timeline there. Um, and then uh, we're also going to want, uh, obviously, the ability to scale it, right? So void um, timeline system um, scale, k handle uh, timeline, and uh, f32 scale scale, right? Um, this also is going to need an update function, which I think our job system does a I think that has that implemented, I believe. Yes. Alright, so we need this guy. Let's see. Yeah, so we'll put this here. All right, and this one's not going to be exported either. This is just so that the systems manager knows to update it. Um, we'll need to forward declare frame data. All right. Um, and I think we have everything included here that we need. Let me think. Uh, I think that's actually all we need. Um, oh no, we actually need a way to actually get the current, um, the current in total from it. So K API, um, U uh, F32 rather timeline. Um, total get. So this will be k handle timeline. Um, and then likewise, we are going to have a I guess we'll call it um, delta get, right? So this will be um, time in seconds since the last frame. Um, and then this will be total time since timeline start. Right? I think, well, we should probably have a this should probably be scale set, and then we should probably also have scale get, right? So, in this case, F32. So we have a getter and setter for that. 
um, so that we can easily set that. That'll keep us from having to actually have like this structure all over the place. And then if we want to add stuff to it, we always can. Uh, so I'm actually going to take this out of here. And put it in the C file. Because there's no need for it to be public. Right? So uh, let's see. We need all of this here. And we'll essentially it's going to bleat about uh return types and that's fine we'll get to that in a minute so initialize uh, initialize is the double call system that we have so um, the first thing that we'll do is if not memory requirement then there's actually nothing we can do so return uh, false I suppose we could also do k error um, timeline System initialize requires a valid pointer to memory requirement. All right. Um, if we do have that, then we actually need to define how large our state is. So um, we'll say timeline system state. Line system state. Uh, and in this, we are essentially going to have um, an array of timelines. And I think it, I think it's safe enough for us to go ahead and just create an array of these. And an array of the handle UUIDs so that we can ma make sure that the handles are not stale. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, update function as well. Oh, I missed it. Never mind. Okay. All right. Um, have to log off. Good luck with everything and have a good night. See ya. All right. JP post. I appreciate that. And uh, welcome by the way. Um, okay. Joshua over on the YouTube side says, I'm up to episode 27 of the Vulcan arc, so close to the triangle. Awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's super satisfying to get to that point, too, because there's so many steps involved in getting it set up. Obviously, if you were doing that, like, on your own, like, without all the explanation of how all this stuff works, it would be much faster, but that's why it took 27 episodes, right? Well, that and setting up some of the other systems and stuff that that relies on. Uh, James R. Webb, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. All right. So, our timeline system state is going to need a DRA of timeline data. So, this is going to be timelines, right? And this is going to be a DRA. DRA. Um, and then we also are going to need a DRA of uh, U64. Uh, and these are going to be um, handle UUIDs, right? And these are purely to check uh, if the... Actually, I don't even... I don't really need to use DRAs for this, actually. I can just handle that myself. Um, so those are to check um, the handles that were provided to see if they're stale or not. So when we create a new handle for a particular slot, um, 
we will record its UUID as well, um, and then just keep track of that um, as we go. Uh, I probably ought to write some sort of generic, some sort of generic system that kind of does this for us before I write this too many times. So we've got a few different systems that uh, we need to convert over to this. So I'll, I'll think about that as well. Um, but for right now, I think I'm fine just uh, kind of doing it on the fly here. So we're going to have a static void. Um, we're going to call this ensure allocated. Um, and what we're going to pass to this is going to be the timeline system state. Right, a pointer to that. And we're also going to pass, um, we'll say U32 um, entry count. Oops, entry count. And so essentially that's going to make sure that we have enough um, space in these two arrays for that many entries, right? Uh, so I guess that means that we need to have a U32 entry count cached as well. So um, we can do here um, if state entry count is uh, less than entry count then we're basically going to need to do the thing otherwise we can ignore it. So um, I guess the next bit would be The next bit would be um, allocating new arrays for timelines and handle UUIDs. So we can say um, timeline data, um, new timelines equals k allocate size of timeline um, data times entry count, right? And we're going to do memory tag array for this guy. And then uh, we'll say if we have state timelines, then we're going to do a um, k copy memory um, from state timelines. Um, wait, that's backwards. It should be two new timelines from state timelines. Um, and then that's going to be um, this right here. Right, so we'll copy in uh, that, except instead of using entry count, we're gonna use the, uh, the old state entry count. Right, so we're going to copy all of the old entries over to the new timelines array. Then we're going to go ahead and k free, um, and we're going to say uh, we want to free state timelines. Um, and this is again, we're going to need this. We should probably just u64 old size equals. that, right, old size, um, old size, mem tag array, right, so we'll free, um, we'll free the old timelines and then we'll say uh, state timelines equals new timelines, right, and we'll do that regardless of whether or not um, the old timelines existed. So we'll essentially do that for um, the timelines and then the UUIDs as well. Um, let's see, what exactly is the purpose of the timeline system? Uh, I missed the start of the stream, sorry if it's been answered multiple times, no worries. So the timeline system is to manage multiple timelines. Um, a timeline is basically going to be used uh, to edit time essentially within the engine as it um, as it goes so we've essentially had a singular timeline so far 
um, which we're calling the, the engine timeline. Um, and we need to split that up at a minimum into two timelines. We need an engine timeline that's always a scale of one. It always is real time. It never gets edited. It's always going to be um, real time. And then we're going to have a game timeline, which can be edited, um, where it could be sped up, slowed down, or even stopped um, by setting its scale. So each timeline has um, a total time that it has existed since it was created, um, a delta time, which is basically the time in seconds since the last uh, frame or the last update frame, and then a time scale. Uh, and the time scale uh, is applied to um, the total time and delta time, right? So um, if we cut it in half, it's going to take twice as long for this frame to get to the same point in time as, as the engine frame uh, or the engine time frame, right? Timeline. So uh, the reason we want to do that is uh, for debugging purposes, for example. So uh, in um, our editor, for example, we'll have a camera that is tied to the engine timeline, right? Our editor camera is tied to the engine timeline. Um, but we may want to pause everything that's happening in a scene to debug like an animation, physics feedback, something like that. We may want to step through a frame at a time, um, things like that. And so um, we'll still be able to move our editor camera around, but the scene will actually be paused and frozen, right? So um, there's also gonna be other timelines that we're gonna have, like every animation will have its own timeline as well, things like that. So we just need a system to kind of manage those for us. Um, and we're setting one up that is going to be globally queryable so that we can get that from anywhere. All right, uh, so let me catch up. Looks like there's been a bunch of chat over on the Twitch side. TCAP rating with a party of 24. Thank you so much. How's it going, TCAP? Good to see you, bud. Appreciate the, uh, appreciate the raid there. Um, I was just answering a question uh, from the YouTube side. Um, and so hopefully, I don't know how long you guys have been here, but hopefully that, that clears up what we're doing on stream. Um, Good to see you guys. Uh, I appreciate all of the chats from the Raiders. Um, <laughs> deep in the juice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> is this a toxic, ra toxic raid? Windows discussing. Yeah, um, I'm actually having an issue with my debugger on Linux right now. So I have to resolve that. I'm hoping next week I'll actually be switching back to Linux. Because uh, I hate working on, on Windows as well. So yeah, Coffee Lava. I know. Wait, did you did you ever actually switch to uh, to Linux? Because I know you were stuck on Windows as well, Coffee Lava. It's good to see you, by the way. <laughs> ignored? No, 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 not ignored. Just took me a minute to get to it. Beard guy, yes, I do have a beard. Um, okay. Can time scale negatively? Yes, it can. So. Um, that's one of the reasons that we're we're doing it the way that we can. But I put a a little bit of a uh, a comment in here. Negative is technically rewinding, but it has to be supported by the system using the timeline, right? So not every system or not is going to be capable of handling um, negative time scales. So some systems will just take that and they'll take the absolute value of it and roll with it that way. Um, but things like animation, we need to be able to reverse those timelines, right? So um, an animation timeline, for example, would be rewindable. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, you did Linux for a year? Yeah. I mean, I had to recently blow away my um, Linux install because it was just... It just needed to be redone, and uh, I'm taking the opportunity to distro hop a little bit, so I'm trying out a new distro. <laughs> nice hair. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So, um, I hope... Did, did you guys hear the whole like timeline explanation that I was just giving? Uh, by the way, K-Alloc is a custom allocator that knows... That knows the size, maybe ensure allocated would be more efficient with a K realloc. Yes, except I don't have K realloc. And I've been too lazy to write it. But yes, that's essentially what this is doing. I should probably just write that at some point. Um, but uh, the, the K allocator also reaches out to the platform layer potentially. 
So I have to like implement that at the platform layer and then bring it up. Um, you just got here and you were treated to some pre-rolls. You know, I ran an ad earlier to see if it would disable pre-rolls and apparently it didn't. So I have, I'm not sure how to get around that. Um, but yes, our allocator does know uh, the size of every allocation. And the reason for that is because uh, we also tag our allocations so that we can actually see a list of what uh, allocation types we have and how much space they occupy. Um, and eventually we're going to split up our arena allocator to keep types of allocations uh, local, localized to sec separate blocks of memory. Um, what distro am I, am I trying? Uh, I'm trying Pop! OS at the moment because I've heard a lot of good things about it and I've never used it. I have used um, Ubuntu before, like a bunch of different flavors of it, um, and that was okay. Pop! OS is okay so far. Um, I'm not convinced I'm going to keep it, but it seems to be okay. Um, NVIDIA runs decently on it. That was the reason I tried it, right? But yeah. I think Twitch shows ads whenever they want to these days. Yeah, I wonder about that sometimes too. And hello, by the way. Um, Ubuntu, oof, yeah. I, I prefer Arch. I'm probably going to wind up switching back to Arch, but I was having really annoying driver issues with it. So, um, yeah, more than likely, like, I used Arch even here on stream for almost two years, I think. Oof, Ubuntu. Ooh, that's a good one. I should make my own distro called Oof, Ubuntu. Um... You used to use Arch, but you then switched to Nix. So that's another one I've thought about, but I've heard that it's so radically different that it's kind of difficult to get used to, which would not be ideal for streaming. But yeah. Ooh, that's good. Dingus Linux. Yes. <laughs> that is my brand. You're right. I need to create my own distro now. I might have to rename this to the Dingus Engine. <laughs> um, let's see. So, um, by the way, timelines are always full, um, or is there capacity to save some realics? So, the way that we're going to do this is we're never going to wind up, we're never going to shrink this. Um, we're only ever going to grow this, uh, probably by a factor of two. So, anything that calls this um, will probably just or maybe I'll do it in here. We'll probably grow it by a factor of two. And then um, when I set this up, we're probably also going to start off with like an entry count of about four. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to bear in mind is anytime we destroy uh, one of the timelines, we're not going to nuke its entry out of the array or pop it or any of that stuff. We're basically just going to mark that, that one slot as available. And then when we go to create a new one, we're going to scan first to see if we have any available slots. If we do, we're going to take that. Otherwise, then we'll go ahead and ensure allocated and, and bump up the size of everything. So, yeah, that's that's more um, more or less what we're going to wind up doing. All right. Uh, appreciate the lurk, by the way. Thank you. Nix OS sounds tempting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it does for sure. Uh, thank you guys very much for the follows, by the way. I do appreciate that a lot. Okay, so we have our timelines. Um, we also need to do the same thing for uh, handle UUIDs. So uh, we have U64 uh, new handle UUIDs. See, now that you've brought it up again, now I'm really like, I really want to reallocate. Because <laughs> this is kind of annoying. It's not kind of annoying. It is really annoying. And it's been bugging me for a while. So I guess, I guess maybe it's time. Maybe it is time. Um, there's also, though, to keep in mind, I have a few, a few different things here. So we have, um, we don't just have k allocate, right? We also have k allocate aligned, 
that aligns memory uh, or that allocates memory with a certain alignment. So technically our K allocate calls this guy under the hood. Um, and then we also have a report, um, which doesn't actually allocate uh, any memory, but um, acts as if memory has been allocated from this tag. And that is to track like GPU allocations and stuff like that. So it's allocated on the GPU, but I can get it reported um, to my allocator so that I can actually like graph it out and track it. Um, and so free is very much the same way. So I basically have to have a variant for each one of these two, which is why I haven't really done it, but I suppose I could not be lazy and actually just bite the bullet and do it. Um, so I guess, I guess what I could do I guess what I could do is literally take a copy of these things and forms a reallocation from the host of the given size. Um, Let's see. Um, and also freeze the block of memory given. Uh, the allocation is tracked for the provided tag. So we'll say the reallocation. All right, um, so we'll actually need another parameter here. So we'll say um, we will say u64 old size u64 new size. Um, and then we also need I guess we should probably put the block first, right? Should probably put the block first. Uh, void uh, block, All right? So we can say param. I don't know why I didn't write a realloc when I was doing this initially. Um, so we have block uh, the block of memory to to reallocate. Um, and then we have old size and new size, the size of the old allocation that gets freed and the size of the new allocation. gets allocated. Um, so we have block, old size, new size, and the tag. Right. Okay. So the only other potential challenge oh, is ads. Because we have those. That's a thing. Doclock, good to see you. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. <laughs> Is ads, yeah. Every once in a while I can get those uh those segues in there, right? It's a little bit of a fine art. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes not. Uh let's see. Invisible HD over on the YouTube side. Hello. How are you? I hope you're doing well. So we've just got about, um, wow, did that just give me an ad screen with OBS? What crack are you on? It is not a, an hour and a half of ads. <laughs> I updated OBS tonight and that has caused more problems than you could possibly imagine. And apparently it broke my ad screen, which is awesome. Yeah, it's not going to be an hour and a half of ads for sure. 
no worries, Doc Lock. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here, though. All right, so um, ads are dead, uh, even though that dialogue says that there were going to be an hour and a half. Uh, apparently, the OBS update that I did tonight broke my ad screen, so that's pretty cool. All right, uh, so allocate aligned is essentially going to be the same thing. So we want um, void block, or first off, reallocate re align. Um, so we're going to have void block, um, and then we're going to have u64 old size and u64 new size. And then we're also going to take alignment, right? So um, let's actually just let's actually just do this. Uh, let's see, memory allocated. Okay, I do I do actually want that? So let me do this, and then. yoink this and paste it here right and get rid of that okay so we have the block of memory old size new size um, and then um, alignment uh, the uh, byte alignment to be used for the reallocation. All right. So given size and alignment. And then, you know what? Actually, let me just move this down to the next line. Okay. So there's reallocate aligned, and then uh, reallocate report is basically going to just take uh, u64 old size size and u64 new size. Um, so we'll do new size here, um, the size of the allocation. And we'll do uh, old here, new here. All right? And then we'll take these three guys. And we'll go to memory.c. And we want k okay, allocate, uh, allocate aligned, allocate report, and essentially these are essentially just going to call under the hood our allocate and free functions. So all they're going to do is just forward essentially. All right. So we'll do. We will do. Um, we are going to allow block to be null. That way, in functions like ensure allocated, we don't have to check for null before we call this, right? We could just say, hey, let's reallocate this thing, and if it doesn't exist, then fine. Um, so let's do um, if block, right? Then we're going to do a, um, a memory copy. So uh, let's do void um, new block equals um, k allocate. And we want uh, new size and tag. And then if block, we'll do um, k copy memory. 
uh, block or whoops new block is the destination the source is going to be block and the size is going to be old size then we're going to do k free um, and we're going to free block um, and that's going to be old size and then uh, we're going to pass through the tag and then um, we're going to return new block and I think that covers us um, and technically speaking I mean we could just make this one like forward down to reallocate aligned uh, let's see are we using any I think we're just aligning to one in this case. So I suppose I suppose we could do this, you know, follow the same pattern and just have it go through all one path. Maybe that's the way to go. Uh, let's see. Can you get the time left for the ad through the Twitch API and show that on the countdown instead? Uh, yeah, so, um, but that requires me to, like, write my own Twitch add-on, which I kind of have started doing, too. Because um, Streamlabs' bot isn't always necessarily reliable, I found. So, um, eventually, that's another thing I'm going to have working at the same time. Uh, Thorgis, 56, good to see you. It's been, been a bit. Uh, development's been, go been going pretty good. Can't complain. Um... If both size and alignment are kept, maybe a single realloc taking just the old pointer and new size would suffice. Um, although you bet alignment isn't tracked along. You know what? Uh, do I track that? I think... I'm trying to remember if I actually do... Nope. That's a dang good point. I'm not going to fix that right now because I don't know what that's going to bork. Um, track aligned um, alloc offset uh, as part of size. Um, because the actual um, dynamic allocator internally does track that stuff. Um, so it essentially has a free list internally. And so I do actually know that information. Um, I just think it's not exposed here. So that's a good point. I'll, I'll leave a fix me in there. Um, do you need to check new block? Um, I mean, I suppose we could, right? Uh, K allocate itself calls K allocate align, which uh, can fail. If it's going to fail, though, um, we actually do return zero after spitting out a K fatal error. So since it's all going to go through the same logic, we shouldn't have to check it twice. So yeah, um, essentially, like... If that does fail, I mean, I could check it, right? Um, I see what you're getting at. Do I want to do that every single time, though? I don't know. I guess we could do that, though. I suppose that's a valid point, right? New block. I just check that, too. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, though, is I'm actually going to take this. Put it here. And let's just do the... Um, Let's just do the aligned, right? So we have um, uh, new size alignment and tag. Um, copy memory should be fine. Uh, we need to use the aligned version of this. Um, so old, old size alignment and tag. Um, we should be good as far as that goes. And then in this K reallocate, we could just do return K reallocate 
aligned, pass block, old size, new size, alignment, and tag. Uh, the alignment will be one in this case. It's essentially what we're doing elsewhere. Um, and technically, this is also um, report. Oh wait, not this one. K. Wait a minute. Do we not have? I don't think we have an aligned report actually. Okay, we don't have to fix that there. That's fine. Um. Okay. So I guess really all we need to do is uh, we'll do k free report old size tag and then k um, k allocate report new size tag right Okay. I think I've covered our bases. So it's essentially just doing the same thing that we were doing in the user code. Just now it's central. Uh, let's see. You have lights, light maps, sorta. Of. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, if realloc fails, old memory isn't. I assume you mean freed, so maybe need to return the old pointer. Though from user perspective, it could be odd in SOA if one, only one array is only resized. Yeah, so like if um, if the realloc fails, like we should scream loud about it, right? We don't want to just like say, okay, well, return the old pointer and keep working, right? Like if a realloc fails, that means something has gone hideously wrong because um, the only time that we actually reach out to the OS for memory is when we allocate our huge pool of memory that we then divvy out from. So once we have that pool of memory, like there's not really reason it should fail unless it's full, which obviously we should bleed to belt. So yeah, I, I tend to think that that's like one of those undefined behaviors or like weird kind of things that could happen if we aren't careful about that. Side code, good to see you. Welcome to the stream. All right, so uh, I think I think we've covered our bases here. Um, so I guess I can go back to timeline system, and now I guess uh, all we really need to do is k reallocate. Um, and I guess, let me do, just to make this a little bit more legible, um, we'll do old size, new size, um, and then this is gonna be entry count instead of state entry count, right? So then we can say, uh, reallocates, uh, the first thing we need to pass is the block. So that's gonna be um, state entry count. Um, or whoops, not state entry count, state timelines rather. Um, and then we'll do um, old size, new size, and keep the tag, right? And then uh, we can get rid of this as well, and we can just say state timelines equals that. And then we can get rid of that. So that's a little bit neater anyway. Um, I think that makes sense. And then I can actually just scope this. So I can then take this. Actually, I guess all of this. Paste that here. Now the old size is going to be, for the UUIDs, it's gonna be 64, uh, U64 rather. Um, and then we're going to do 
handle UUIDs, handle UUIDs, and then also as an array. So that way we should be covered. Okay, before I forget also, I wanna add something to our change log. Added um, k reallocate, k reallocate aligned, and k reallocate, reallocate um, report um, for easier um, handling of reallocs and user code. Okay, because I am going to forget that otherwise and like the patch notes. Uh, let's see. Also matches realloc from the standard library. If the realloc fails, the original pointer is untouched and remains valid. Yeah, which I have personally never liked that, right? Because with something as critical as an allocation, like if that fails for some reason, um, I think it should just like outright just cut, right? At least in like, especially at this level, I, I think that, that that's never made sense to me. I could understand like on a, um, you know, maybe an embedded device or something like that where maybe you'd want to try to handle that, but like, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that here. Um, unless the pool isn't initialized, then it could fail with out of memory if overcommitted on Linux. I don't think that'll be an issue though, because that, that's why we're grabbing a, a huge um, arena of memory. Um, which you'll know because a null pointer is returned. API wise, it makes sense, yeah. I think standard mem copy, mem copy doesn't approve of null pointer. It does not, I don't believe. Um, I also like adding unlikely to error paths. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Like, the minute I find myself putting a note in, or a comment in code, like, this should never happen, I go, well, maybe I should handle it if it does. <laughs> or maybe I should make sure that that, that can't happen. I'm not a huge fan of undefined behavior. Um, or worse, behavior that varies by compiler because it's undefined. Um... Okay. So I think that's the only thing that we need to realloc in there. And then obviously we need to set state entry count equal to entry count. Um, so that'll handle whenever we need to resize. So when we initialize, um, we are going to say ensure allocated. Um, Oh wait, you know what? We're not even there yet. Getting ahead of myself. So the first thing we need to do is fill out the memory requirement, right? This will tell the, the systems manager that's going to be standing up this system how much memory we actually need um, for the system state. This is gonna be uh, basically just the size of the structure itself. So um, memory requirement equals size of, um, and we're going to say timeline system state. Uh, and then if we don't have memory, oops, if we don't have memory, we're going to return true, right? So uh, if we call this the first time and we pass a memory requirement here, um, but we don't pass memory, uh, then that means that all we're doing is we're trying to get the memory requirement then the system will go ahead and stand up that memory. And then we'll call this again, this time providing memory um, and probably a config uh, if we're gonna pay attention to it. Um, and at that point, um, we will actually have the state that we need, right? So um, that being said, there is kind of an important decision we need to make. We either need to pass the state here uh, in every single one of these functions, or we need to obtain that state um, 
a pointer of that state. And I think we should probably obtain a pointer of that state from the systems manager whenever we need to do this. Um, we could also keep like a static pointer internal to this. Uh, but if we ever hot reload this, which I don't know if we're ever going to do, um, that would get borked. So I'm not a huge fan of doing that usually. Um, so I th think we'll be fine. If it winds up being a performance issue, I can always switch it. Um, so we probably need to go over real quick to the systems manager um, because we actually have known system types here, right? So um, every time we create a system, we basically add to this list. Um, and incidentally, this uh, enumeration here is a lookup into a array of states for all the different systems we have. So in this case, uh, the last one we added was actually audio. So we're going to do k system system type. Um, and this is going to be timeline. If I can type. All right. And we'll need that when we go to query um, for that. So um, I think before we get to that, though. We can go ahead and I guess in this case, um, we can do timeline system state state. We already have the state here, right? Um, is going to equal memory, right? Uh, if we do have that provided and then we can do ensure allocated uh, state. And the entry counts, we're actually going to start off at like four, right? Um, so prevent lots of early realics, right? Um, and that should be fine, I think. And I think once we... Oh, you're the best. Thank you. Wife just brought me hot chocolate. She's the best. Ooh, it's really good, too. Oh, unlikely in modern C++. Not as a note, but an, an un, a define unlikely. Built-in expect. Oof, yeah. I gotcha. I'm not a, um, I'm not a modern C++ connoisseur. Uh, Linux will apparently give you as much memory as you ask for, i.e. malloc will never return null, but when you try to write to it, <laughs> popcorn, yeah. I, I mean, I just make it a habit not to, um, well, the first thing, so, okay, so the first thing that I do is when I allocate from system memory, I also zero the entire thing out, which is writing to it, right? So in that way, I'm kind of guaranteeing that I actually have the memory available. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, so let's see. Ensure allocated. I don't think. Well, the only. I guess. You know what? I should probably do. Const uh, u32 um, start entry counts equals four. Start entry counts. And then we'll also do state. Entry count equals start entry count. Um, to do maybe read this from config. Not important right now. So I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So there's the initialize. Uh, we'll come back to update. I want to do shutdown first, which actually I want to move that here. So shut down, um, all we're going to basically need to do is free uh, the memory within uh, the state itself. So we'll do timeline system state, which this one we do have the state pointer. So we'll just call this uh, typed state equals state. 
and uh, we'll say if state type state rather um, timelines k free uh, typed state timelines size of um, timeline data times type state entry count memory tag array right uh, so we'll do that we will also do I suppose I should just do typed state timelines equal to zero um, we'll also do handle UUIDs U64 array for that one uh, and then typed states handle UUIDs is also zero and then typed state um, entry count is also going to be zero so that way there's no question as to what's going on. Um, if we try to access any of that, it'll all be zeroed. Okay. So update. Update is basically gonna be, I guess, relatively straightforward. Right, because it's all going to be based off the the system clock. We're just going to kind of scale things as they go. So, um, what we'll do is, I guess we'll grab this. Uh, we'll grab this, and. For u32 i equals zero, i is less than type states entry count plus plus i. Um, all right, and then for um, actually we need type state timelines and type states handle UIDs. So if what we're going to do is we're going to say if type state handle UUIDs sub i equals invalid ID u64, then we're going to uh, skip it. Well, I guess we could actually just do the, the not, right? Meaning there's something in this slot that we can actually use. Uh, thank you for the follow, by the way. Appreciate that. So, um, in this case, we want um, we want to update only update um, timelines and ads. So we have ads. Um, I know the timer up there. I know what that says. Um, the OBS update I put in broke it. It's a minute and a half, not an hour and a half. But yeah. We will be back in um, about 60 seconds. In fact, while that's running, let me actually see if I can fix that. If I can remember. Yeah, it went back to went back to minutes for some reason. I 
looks like OBS actually like ref reset the custom script that I have for a timer. That's eh, really annoying. Okay. All right, I'll have to fix it later. It's fine. At least I know what the problem is. All right. Um... <laughs> Bezos is really eat reading for that ad money. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's see. Are timelines events sorted? Wondering if they're an API to join them or ask when is the next previous after a time point is. So we are eventually, we're gonna build on this, right? So right now, all it's basically gonna do is manage delta times and scale, right? That's the sort of simplification for it. Um, we're going to also enhance this to uh, be able to, uh, to be able to add events being fired at certain points in the timeline. Um, so when you create a timeline, before you actually like set it up or register it or have it have it be updated or any of that um we'll actually be able to like add uh events to it um which will give us the ability to have timed events for example um so that's going to be a thing um sorted i haven't really thought about how or why those would ever have to be sorted But it is something we'll likely probably tackle at some point. You're temporarily off your Odin project. You're over to C++ 17 for a minute. Nice. Yeah, um, Odin's one of those languages I want to try, but it's not stable enough to actually use for produ production yet, unfortunately. Talking of time oddities, somehow you managed to fit two 1.5 hours of ads in 15 minutes. I know, right? I don't know what's, yeah, things are just like not, I don't know if I'm like giving off an EMP pulse or something and it's just like screwing with the technology. I have no idea. Um, let's see. Hey there. I was wondering, does your engine support Wayland on Linux? Not yet. Only through X, X Wayland. Yeah. So our, uh, we do have a platform layer for Wayland in the pipeline. So we do have a to-do item for that, but yeah, it's not there yet. Um, unfortunately, Wayland is just not far enough along um, and not not quite stable enough, I'll, I dare say, um, to really warrant the effort of, of porting to it just yet. But I will be doing it. Um, it just means that I have to essentially write the Linux platform layer for Wayland specifically, which is kind of annoying. All right, um, so we want to only update timelines. Um, we should say slots that contain active timelines. So um, what does that mean? Well, that essentially means that uh, the, I guess we can say, type state, um, timelines, sub I, delta time, plus equals, P frame data. Oh, you know what? I was going to remove delta time for P frame data. Let me think about that for a minute. Because if I do that, I lose the ability to have it here. So I'd have to feed that from the engine somehow. Maybe I'll leave the engine, the engine one there, right? And just kind of loosely say, don't use it. I don't really like that though. I really want everybody to use the timeline, and I feel like if the frame data is there, it's going to be tempting to use. Hmm. Maybe then. Maybe our engine calls this directly. Maybe we don't register. Maybe we don't register with us with the actual system manager. 
for updates. Maybe we opt out of that. And instead of this, we will say, um, see, do we need application time? I don't think we do. Let's do F32 engine delta time, right? Because we know that's going to be reliable. So we can say engine delta time times type states, timelines, sub i scale, right? So each one of these things will have um, its own scale applied to it as part of the update. Um, and the engine delta time will be fed in directly from our, our game loop. Should be fine. I think that makes sense. Um, we would also, we would also, oh wait, you know what? Delta time we would actually set. Total time is what we'd want to add. And for the sake of not repeating ourselves, um, we'll say F32 scaled delta Right, and then uh, we can do scaled delta, scaled delta. Right, I think that makes sense. Wayland is perpetually about 10 years away from being ready. Yeah, I know, and it's really unfortunate because I've used it a little bit and it is a heck of a lot smoother of an experience when it works. In fact, I used it here on stream for a little bit, but I had to step away from it because there's stuff that still doesn't work in it. Like, um, and I mean, you could arguably blame the applications for this, right? But render doc, for example, doesn't work correctly under Wayland, which is kind of a big deal. That's actually kind of a blocker for me. And I don't know. Um, I don't know if Baldurk is planning on doing that or not. So. If I do write a Wayland layer for this, then maybe I'll see if he'd be open to me contributing a Wayland layer for that. But I think he was saying that there was a bunch of issues around surfaces and presentation when it comes to Wayland and consistency with that. So I think there's there was actually like blocking reasons that he couldn't do it um, or couldn't do it so that it would be reliable. Uh, not really related to anything going on right now, but I wanted to ask what R RTTI is really useful for in a game engine. It seems useful for profiling or an editor, but I'm not sure what it's useful for otherwise. Um, let me just make sure that I'm thinking of the right thing here. You're talking about runtime type information as RTTI? I hate acronyms, by the way. Because I always have to make sure that I'm, you know, referencing the right thing. Um, so it, you're essentially talking reflection, more or less, which could be useful for serialization. So from that perspective, yes, it could be useful. If that's what you mean. Um, let me go to... Timeline system H and change the update. Um, we actually don't need this frame data. I don't want to use that. Uh, instead, I want the F32 engine delta time. All right. So uh, we have that. And that's really all that needs to do. So we can just return true on there. 
All right, uh, timeline system create. So here is where uh, some of the handle stuff comes into play. Um, although, seeing this actually makes, it reminds me that I have to actually do something. Um, so there is one more step in, whoops, not here. One more step in ensure allocated that we need to do. So before we actually flip over the entry count, we need to invalidate all new slots by setting the handle UUID to invalid ID U64. So what that essentially means is another for loop. Uh, this is going to be uh, U32I equals, uh, and we're going to start at state entry count. Um, and we're going to say as long as i is less than entry count um, plus plus i. Right, so we're going to invalidate all the new slots that we're adding. Um, and so uh, we'll essentially just paste this guy. Uh, and this is going to be, I think, just state as far as this is concerned. So uh, we just set, we get rid of this if. Uh, and we set that equal to u64. Invalid ID u64, rather. Then we go ahead and flip that, right? If we don't do that, then we're not going to know. Um, none of the handles uh, or none of the slots will be marked as free. That's how we're essentially going to tell that. So when we go to create, uh, what we're going to do first is we are going to, well, first off, get the uh, the system. So uh, system manager get state, um, and it's going to be um, state. Um, what was it system? Systems manager state. What was it? We just had this a second ago. System type. Right. So um, timeline system state state equals that, right? So we'll get that. Uh, and then we'll say if we should have already, uh, actually, we don't even have to do that. We could just loop through u32 i equals zero. i is less than state entry count plus plus i. Uh, if state handle UUIDs, sub i equals invalid ID U64, um, found a free slot, use it, right? So this is basically gonna search for unused, um, unused indices within the array. So the first thing we're gonna do is do a K handle, uh, create, and the handle index that we're going to pass to it is going to be i, right? And that's how it's going to to index into that array. So we're going to have k handle um, new handle equals that. So we create a we create a handle to it. Um, that's going to automatically generate a handle UUID for us. So now we can say state handle UUIDs sub i equals new handle unique ID, unique ID. And then we can say states, uh, timelines, um, and we're gonna have total time, it's gonna be set to zero. Uh, states, whoops. What did I? Okay, must have hit the wrong wrong key there. Okay, so um, 
handle UIDs equals new handle unique ID, unique ID. All right. Uh, then state uh, timelines sub i total time equals zero. Oops. State timelines sub i um, delta time. Uh, it's also going to be zero. And then state timelines sub i scale time scale rather equals scale. And then we're going to return new handle. Um, and so what that's going to do is that's going to um, create the array entries that we need and um, and handle that, right? Uh, if we actually get past this loop and we haven't found a free slot, uh, no free slot available, um, realloc and use the next. Um, new slot, right? So um, what we'll do at this point is we'll say u32 old count equals state entry count. Oops, entry count, right? And then um, exotic, exotic man, thank you for the uh, follow as well as pet food guy. And uh, it's baffled, appreciate that. Uh, Ruche, thank you for the stretch redeem. Appreciate that. <laughs> Nathir Kassam. Vulcan, live long and prosper. I love it. Awesome. That's great. I love it. Oh, I did need that stretch too. All right. Uh, count cannot decrease. So um, all, all the count is, is... Um, it's essentially like an allocated slots count, right? So no, it never decreases. Um, and like timelines are not going to be something that we're going to be, I guess we are going to create and, and release a lot of them as we load and unload animations, but I can't see it being that volatile of a thing. Could maybe cheat and use the top bit sets to signify other bits or the next free location. Uh, maybe it's overkill here. No idea how large hot is the timeline stuff. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think it's going to be that hot um, just because it's all going to be um, in, in, in index lookup, right? So the only time that we ever actually have to loop through the array is here when we're actually creating um, to look for a free slot. Uh, otherwise, uh, the handle actually has um, the uh, the index into this array. So we can actually just go straight into that array, straight to that index, get the data we need or set the data we need and we're done. So we'll see that here in a second. Okay. Um, so we have the old count. Uh, we need to ensure allocated. Uh, we'll pass state and we're gonna do uh, old count times two, All right? So when we'll ensure that's allocated, and then we'll do what we'll do is uh, we'll say basically more or less all of this stuff here, right? And actually, actually, let's declare this guy. Oops, let's declare this guy up here, All right? Um, that way we only have it declared once. Um, and so instead of I, in this case, uh, it's going to be old count, right? Because that'll give us technically the, uh, the next uh, array entry or the next index into the array that previously didn't exist, but that, that now does exist. Um, okay. So we go ahead and do that. And then we are, we are golden basically. Okay. 
It's uh, There's a little repetition in here, but I'm fine with it. I'm not really worried about it. Okay, so we have that. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually handling uh, the destruction of a timeline, which is actually going to be pretty easy. Um, it's actually going to be easier than creating one. So um, I'm just going to copy pasta this guy. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually make sure that the handle is not invalid. So we're going to say uh, if um, k handle is invalid, and we'll pass the timeline handle, um, then we're just going to return, right? We're not going to do anything. Because if we're passing um, a handle that is, is completely invalid, um, there's not really much we can do about it. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to check that the UUID and the handle that we've passed is uh, matches the one at the handle index of that handle to ensure that the handle itself is not stale. So um, check that the passed in handle is not stale. And we do that by saying if uh, state uh, handle UUIDs sub timeline um, oops, handle index, right? Uh, if that is not equal to um, timeline unique ID, unique ID, right? If those two don't equal, then uh, it's stale do nothing. Uh, so we'll return, right? Because uh, what's likely happened there is we had multiple handles to the same timeline. Um, something released that timeline and uh, now that timeline doesn't actually exist anymore, right? So, um, so there's that. Um, okay. So if they do match, then that means that the timeline is still valid, so we need to actually clear it. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll say uh, k0 memory, and the block is gonna be uh, state, uh, and it's gonna be uh, timelines, sub, timeline, handle index. Uh, and we're gonna need the address of that, right? And uh, the size, is going to be size of size of timeline data, right? So we'll zero that out, and then we'll say state um, handle UUIDs sub timeline handle index uh, equals valid ID U sixty four, right? So that invalidates it. Um, Clear the data and invalidate the handle. Um, all right, so that is uh, that is all that it takes to actually look that up and invalidate it. Right, so literally it's just a quick check to say, hey, is it stale? Um, and then uh, from there we we look it up and do what we need to do. So basically, all the rest of this is going to be super simple to implement. Um, it's going to be essentially this same type of thing. So um, what I might actually do, so we have uh, system scale, get, set, total get, delta get. Uh, what I might actually do is let's do a, a static um, timeline data. And we'll say uh, timeline get at, um, and we'll pass the timeline system state, state, and then uh, u32 index, right? Um, and we're gonna put a lot of this, this logic in here, right? So we'll do, um, we'll essentially do this, this same type of thing so we don't have to repeat it all over the place. So uh, if the handle is invalid, um, 
which actually we should be, instead of, we should be passing the handle here. K handle timeline, right? So if that is invalid timeline, then we're going to return a null pointer, right? Uh, and we can even delete about this. Let's do a warning. We'll say um, cannot get timeline um, for invalid handle. Just so if we ever hit that, we know why. Um, this we don't need. We can pass that in elsewhere. Uh, actually, we should probably do that here. Instead of taking this in, let's actually just do that here, right? Uh, so, um, if if states uh, so if the if it's stale, do nothing. Um, let's do. Let's flip this on its head. And will return the address of uh, states timelines timeline handle index right uh, otherwise stale return null uh, and I suppose we could we could warn about that too right uh, so k warn Um, attempting to get a timeline with a stale handle. No timeline will be returned. All right. So now all we have to do for all of these functions is just call this guy. Um, and we have everything we need. So um, here, uh, we can do, uh, let's see, so for scale, I guess uh, if we have an invalid handle, we'll just return zero. So what we'll do is um, timeline gets at timeline, right, um, and here we'll actually say return. Um, Actually, let's actually be a little bit more explicit about this. Let's do timeline data, data uh, equals that. Um, if not data, turn zero. Uh, otherwise, return data. Uh, in this case, we want scale. And that's more or less the way that it's going to work. Um, do you also want to assert that the first index is less than count? Well, I have to assert adds at the moment. But I'll answer that when we come back. And I see your question over there on the YouTube side, Jenny. I will uh, answer that as soon as we come back from ads. Um, and yes, I am aware that the timer is horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and that's because of an OBS update. I have to fix it. But I'm hesitant to try and fix it while I'm running the stream. Because might, I might break it worse. So I'll fix it off stream and we'll go from there. Realistically, we have about 45 seconds left on ads. Okay, almost done with ads.
All right, cool. Uh, ads are dead, so we are back. Uh, so, Jenny, you are correct. Um, so using static in this way basically makes this function private to that compilation unit. So, yeah, it's uh, it's more... I can't say it's quite equivalent of the C++ private, but yeah, it's... Your name is pronounced like Ian. Um, okay, I gotcha. Oh, like, uh, would that be Johnny? Am I getting that correct? I feel like I'm still butchering that. But yeah, um, that is, the, you did, you were correct on that though. That's what the static is for. Yep. Okay. Um, so do you also want to assert first that index is less than count? So yeah, that is another, another thing that we need to add as well. Um, because theoretically we could do something stupid, right? If we're passing like a fake handle, I suppose. Um, so I suppose we could do, we'll do the invalid check first. Make sure that it's not stale. Um, well, we can't actually do that next. So yeah, actually right here. Um, so we want to say, um, oh, this has got to go below the state actually. Um, timeline handle index is less than state entry count. Um, and then if it fails that, we're going to say handle um, provided handle index is out of range. Right. Uh, for some reason it's not it's not auto including my thing here, so I'm gonna have to go up here. And include asserts. Right. Okay. So This is more more or less the way that we're going to handle these other um, these other gets, right? So um, let's go ahead and and we'll take care of this set as well. Uh, so we'll do this one first, and this one all we have to do is return the total time. And then in this one, we just return the delta time. And then in this one, this one's going to be a little bit different. So in this one, if we have data, Uh, then we're going to say data scale equals scale. Uh, should be time scale, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So that's our interface, right? It's pretty simple stuff. So the the more widespread change. Well, first off, we have to get this uh, registered. We have to get this registered with our um, our systems manager. And then we also need to call our update from the engine. So I'm, I actually want to do the engine update first before I forget it. So systems manager update is here. I am going to call this immediately after that. And update um, timelines. So I'm going to say timeline system update and we're gonna have to get the state for that which is kind of annoying I might just cache that up here actually um, timeline states equals um, system manager get state 
uh, k system type timeline. And then we'll do timeline state here. All right, so now we have engine delta time, which we're just gonna pass delta that we calculate right up here, right? Um, and we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna get rid of these as well. Um, note that this is not done by the systems manager because we don't uh, want or have uh, timeline data in the frame data struct any longer. All right. Um, so we need to go to our frame data and I'm just gonna actually do it here. Uh, and we are going to delete those. And I know that there are things that are using those, and that's fine. We will fix those one by one to use our new timelines instead. Um, that being said, I do just recall, I did just recall that uh, there was a step that I missed in the timeline system when we are initializing it, we didn't actually set up our defaults, which we're gonna set up two uh, defaults. So um, set up default timelines, one for the engine and one for the default um, game. So, um, what we will need to do is we're also going to need some way to, to keep these handles externally somehow. I guess maybe we shouldn't do it here. Maybe we should do it at the engine level. Right, because we're gonna need um, we're gonna need to pass those things around um, so that we actually have those handles to use. So I guess let's do right after we initialize this is probably where we need to set those up. So set up default timelines. So we'll do k handle. Uh, engine timeline and that's going to be equal to timeline system create and that's going to have a scale of 1.0 and then we're also going to have a game timeline which is also going to default to 1.0 but we can change it All right. and I guess when we create that we should probably also have some checks in here to keep people from foobarring things. So uh, when we do scale set, even before we do any of this stuff, I'm gonna do a sanity check to say if timeline handle index equals zero, um, we're not gonna do anything. Note, zero is always the engine scale, which should never be modified. Um, we'll also, I guess, warn about this. Um, timeline system Uh, scale set cannot be used against the default engine 
timeline. Okay. So we set up those two. Now we can put that in the application state or we can put it in the engine state and have it be queryable. Um, where we actually store those might matter. Or since technically speaking, those two timelines always are going to exist, we could also have something in the timeline system to just query them directly instead of you know having to have a handle to access those. So maybe that's maybe that's the way that we do that. Um, and if we create extra ones, we'll have the handle available at the time of creation, right? So um, maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll have um, do we want to have do we query for the handle and then use that? Or do we just query directly? Because we're going to have to duplicate all these if we query directly. If we go directly, we're going to have to have a separate copy of all these, which feels wrong. So, all right, let's do k-api. Um, and we'll do k-handle. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, should I... I could generate a handle off of that. So we'll do timeline system get engine timeline handle. God, that's a long function name. I hate it. Um, let's just do that, right? Let's just do that. So we'll do one for that and one for one for the game, right? And those will sort of just be some defaults that we know always exist. Um, I think I'm fine with that. Uh, let's see catch up on chat here so uh the geeko one how's it going good to see you um how do you get clang d to work without uh compilation database compile commands jason uh if you have it how do you generate it without using cmake so uh, i don't use any of that actually so uh what i do is um for each of the libraries that i have in here um or each of the quote unquote, um, assemblies that I have in here. Um, under that folder, I have a compile flags text file that it also uses, right? And this includes uh, all of my defines and all of my includes. Um, and that is actually generated by my build process um, where uh, if I go to make file, uh, I'll go to the library, for example, um, all the way down here at the bottom, um, I have one that runs a PowerShell script and one that runs um, a series of Linux commands to generate uh, the compile flags text file. So basically what it does is it takes all of the data that's in this make file anyways for all of the, um, all of the includes uh, and all of the defines and it just spits it out to that text file. And then D, uh, Clang D can actually pick that up and use it. And so that's kind of the way that works. Uh, thank you for the hydrate redeem, by the way. Troglodyto2000. Hello. How's it going? I still love that name. It's hilarious. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do you compile in Windows? Do you use MSVC? Um, if so, how do you get the LSP working? Um, or you're using MinGW, um, so CMake generates. Okay, so I don't use CMake or any of that stuff. I don't use MinGW. Um, what I'm using on Windows is Clang. 
um, and then it uh, is essentially compiling in Visual Studio mode. So you have to have Visual Studio um, compiler installed as well. Um, and it just sort of forwards it onto that is the way that, that I have it set up. Um, and then as far as the LSP um, goes, um, I have this compile flags that gets set up. Um, one for the engine, one for um, you know each one of these plugins. Like all of these uh, folders that contain code also contain one of those. Um, and so that's that's kind of how that works. Um, and then of course, obviously, I've got my Vim config. Um, so I do have, if you're interested in my Neo Vim config, um, I do have a link there. Assuming the bot is actually going to work and drop it for me. There it goes. Uh, my NeoVim setup is available there. Okay. Oh, you thought your um, YouTube blocked the message? Okay, yeah. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes I get focused and I don't see the message right away. So I'm gonna ask a dumb question, but I can't get my window in Windows to be any other color than white. If anybody knows, I would love some help. Um, do you mean like your your window background? Because there is like a, I think it's a pen color or something you have to use to, to make that happen. If that's what you mean. Or your window border. I don't, I don't recall. I don't do um, I don't do anything really with the border styling, so I don't recall. Unfortunately, my usual goal with um, whenever I'm working with the Windows API is to get away from it as fast as possible. Okay, so I think um, I think what we're gonna do here. We'll just define these real quick. Uh, so we are going to need uh, the state, which I'll just copy pasta this. Um, and then what I'll do here is I will do k handle um, handle, and then I'll say handle. Handle index for engine is always going to be zero because that's always the first one we create. And then it's going to be handle unique ID, unique ID equals states handle UUIDs zero. And then uh, return handle. And what's cool about that is I can actually just take this and do the same thing here. So we're, we're technically like creating a new handle to it, but that's fine. Um, zero and one will always exist. Um, you cannot, you cannot get rid of them, right? I should probably enforce that in code actually. Um, so if timeline Handle index equals zero. Actually, I should say if it's less than two. Um, K error. Timeline system destroy cannot be called for default engine or game timelines. All right, cool. So that way we don't have to worry about that. Um, and we've already blocked uh, the ability to edit the scale on the engine one. The game one we do want uh, that available for. Okay. So we've got that. Um, I suppose. I suppose then we actually really don't need to do this here. 
We really don't need these here. Because now we can get the handles anywhere. So, um, so let's put that back here where I was originally going to put it. Right? And... I suppose we don't actually need these because those aren't going to be used. All right, we'll just create them. Uh, let's see. Okay, so engine.c. So we don't need to initialize anything. All we need to do in here then is just manually call this update. So we're done with that. Um, let's go over to the systems manager and let's register the system so um, I'm gonna do include systems timeline system and uh, we want to do this pre-boot I think so that's pretty important to, to exist uh, so what we're gonna do This doesn't really rely on much except logging, so I guess we could do this pretty early on. Uh, we'll need to do it after platform. I guess we could do it right before our XForm system. So uh, we'll do our timeline system. Uh, timeline system config. Uh, timeline config. Uh, we're not going to bother filling anything out. Right? We could just set that to one or whatever. Who cares? Um, and then we do if not systems manager register. And uh, the state is going to be the state of the system manager itself. The type is going to be uh, K system type timeline. Um, the initialize function pointer is going to be timeline system initialize minus the arguments. Right. Uh, the shutdown is going to be uh, timeline system shutdown. Right. Uh, the updates we're not actually going to pass because that's called manually by the engine. Um, we also don't have a render prepare frame for that either, so we're not going to use that. And then we'll do um, the address of timeline config, which isn't really necessarily being used right now, but all right. So. Um, I guess we could just do this same thing. Fill to register timeline system, right? And that'll go ahead and stand everything up for us um, in our sort of standardized way. So now our system is registered. That's all that requires. Uh, let's see. You know what? I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do I'm going to do this as well. All right, we should probably have that exposed to app config, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so let's do a debug build. Let's see how much crap we broke. That got way further than I thought it was going to. Okay, so it looks like all the broken stuff actually is in testbed lib, which is interesting, right? That's where we've removed all that delta time stuff. So, um, 
game keybinds. Oops, I wanted the C file for that. Tamman, how's it going? Yeah, you are late tonight. It's all good, though. Glad to see you here. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Get away from the Windows API AS ASAP. Yes, abs absolutely. My number one goal when writing platform layers is to get away from the platform as fast as possible. And that's any platform. It's not just Windows. They all suck. Mac OS might actually be worse. Believe it or not. Okay. So. Here's an interesting bit. So. Our camera right now. Is hooked to these controls, right? So we have a game on yaw, game on pitch, right? These are these are hooked to key events. And right now there's we're using delta time. Now we do want our camera to use the engine timeline. Um but that's not necessarily always going to be true for all cameras. So then comes the question, do we have the or should we have the ability to specify on our camera what timeline it belongs to? Because then we could essentially pull it from that, right? Uh, because when we're doing any of these animations, we have to scale them by, by the frame time. I tend to think that we probably should do that even though that means more work. Let me see where else this is being done though, because maybe I'll just put a to-do pin in it and call it a day. Looks like actually most of the issues are in game keybinds. Um, there might be some stuff in testbed main too. Okay. So, Let's do this for now. Let's make a temporary temporary function. And we're going to say um, F32 is the return type. Um, and we're going to say get engine delta time. And I don't think we're going to need any state or anything for that. So we should be fine. Um, Uh, we're gonna do uh, systems manager. Wait a minute. Um, state get. Um, wait a minute. Why does it want? Oh, I just want systems manager state get. I thought it was. Well, what we actually want at the moment is ads, apparently, according to the Bezos. So we got to wait for ads. And yes, I am aware the timer on the screen is broken. I have a note to fix it. I just don't want to fix it while we're currently like running with it because who knows what that could potentially break, right? So instead of, it's not an hour and a half of ads, it's only 90 seconds of ads. And we've got about 50 seconds left. Almost done with ads. Oh, I just saw the, uh, all right, 
Cool. Ads are done. Uh, so, uh, the Geeko, thank you for the, uh, the hydrate redeem. I don't remember if I redeemed it, but there it is. Thank you for that. All right. Um, so for this, um, systems manager, uh, what was it? Is it get state? Yeah, get state. Get state. Um, and then K system type um, timeline. For some reason, my include isn't working here, so let's get that in here. Um, include systems. Actually, I think this one's in core. Systems manager. There we go. All right, so uh, we have the state, and then we need to get the um, engine delta time. So uh actually i don't even think we might not even actually need let's do k handle uh engine equals timeline system which apparently that's not in here either include systems timeline system all right, so timeline system get engine. Uh, and then we have a timeline system uh, delta. Don't we have? Scale get. I thought it was timeline system delta get I thought it was did we not actually oh timeline delta get ooh yeah I named that function wrong Everything else is timeline system. This is just timeline. Let's at least be consistent here. Okay. Uh, so we have timeline system delta get, uh, and we return that directly. All right. So now we can say get engine delta time very easily anywhere else. So we can do uh, get engine delta time. And get engine delta time. Uh, this is also going to be the same thing. Uh, this is going to be get engine delta time. Let's see. This is going to be the same thing. delta time K 
couple more times, I think. Actually, that might be it. All right, so let's save that. Go over here. Build again. Tamin with the uh, with the resub. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, buddy. Four months. Time flies, huh? Definitely appreciate the support there. Thank you, sir. Uh oh, what am I doing? There is why is let's see. So we don't actually need We don't need this. We don't need this. Or this. Or this. Okay. So we don't need that. We don't need that anymore. All of these are basically just unused. Okay. So line 24 and 25. Uh, oh, I guess we don't need the state here. I thought we were going to, but we didn't wind up actually needing it. Um, Question for fun, do you already have suspicions of a certain existing elements that will cause some bugs and errors when building the first game? Yes, I do. Definitely do. Uh, let's see, line 24. Oh, uh, okay. I'm missing a void there, and then 218. Okay. So this needs to have void. Void. And then 218. I think is going to be we don't need frame data anymore yeah I think testbed main is probably going to have some of these issues as well yeah that's what I thought okay so I guess let's put I guess let's put this towards the top for now. Let's put it right here. That's fine. Um So we'll include that. And then we will do get engine delta time. Right, so we'll just do that a couple more times. And once more here. Uh, 
Okay. In theory, we should be we should be good to go. Let me just open Mm, let me see. Open the debugger. See if we completely foobarred anything. Um, I moved the car earlier, so that's actually expected, right? I moved it inside for some tests I'm doing off screen. Uh, okay, so this looks correct to me. Uh, so let's... Let's actually do a quick test on this just to make sure. So um, this one is engine. This one is game. Uh, and I'm actually going to manually change this engine one to like 0 0.1 to make it really really obviously slow. I'm not going to leave it that way, but just to test and and see what happens. Uh, essentially, our camera should wind up moving extremely slowly now. Which it does. Look at that. Turns slow, it moves slow. So yeah, that looks like it's working. So we now have um, the ability to scale things, um, scale time, right? Uh, so obviously this is a um, this is scaling the the engine time. So we're not really going to see the usage of this right away, um, but when we come back and we start doing things for animation, that's where we're really going to use it, right? Um, we're also going to set, uh, we're going to play around with um, setting like some key framing ability to be able to step through frames um, and actually step time forward frame by frame, um, probably in the next stream. So uh, with that, this is all the stuff that we uh, modified today. Um, I'm actually, you know what, change log. Um, added uh, timeline system. Um, I'm going to say basic timeline system. Um, will likely be enhanced in the future. All right. So uh, we edit the time uh, the change log as well. added um, timeline system right and we're going to push that and this is getting pushed directly to the 0 0.7 branch right so you guys will have immediate access to that um, we know that the feature works right and we'll uh, we'll play around with exploring a little bit more on the next stream all right um, Let's see, uh, before we go, I just want to double check the chat real quick. Um, some engines have integration with IDEs like Unity that creates a VS project. Is there a portable way of implementing a feature like this? They use like stuff like CMake under the hood, um, you know, to generate that stuff. So uh, I probably am not going to go through the, the hassle of doing that because uh, doing that, you have to maintain it as well. Um, which means you have to create like templates for those projects. And anytime the architecture, the engine changes, you also have to make sure those templates are up to date and it's a pain in the butt. I've done it before. I don't have interest in doing it, at least not in the short term. Uh, also, do you know if all compilers linkers support the creation of PDB files? That is a MSVC thing only. Uh, none of the others do that. That is purely MSVC. Okay, let me find somebody to raid.
Uh, let's see. Who do we want to go with tonight? Uh, I actually might. I know who I'm going to read tonight. Because it's a good cause. And I'm a fan of it. We are going to raid Alveus Sanctuary, which is a non-profit animal rescue. Um... And I think it's a really good cause. I like to support it whenever I can. Um, and one of the ways I can support that is by rating them. So um, just having the uh, the stream up helps uh, support them financially. So um, I think it's a really good cause. I like to support it. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, I really appreciate you guys on both sides, both the uh, YouTube side and the Twitch side. I appreciate it. Um, YouTube, I'll drop a link uh, to, to the Twitch stream for Alveas Sanctuary. Um, if you're interested in, in having that open so that you guys can go, uh, there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys, uh, for, uh, joining me and, um, and for the support. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't already, um, definitely toss me a follow on the Twitch and, and YouTube sides. Um, those counts help me grow the channel. I really appreciate when you guys do that. Um, and it helps me out a lot, right? So, um, yeah. That is uh, basically, that's basically it. I'll see you guys on the next stream. See ya. Man, on the YouTube side, there's the link for that. I'll see you guys later.